Hey everybody, God bless you. Welcome to another Thursday evening Cyber Gospel Hour. We are so excited that you are here. You know how I like to start this off. Give you a couple of seconds to get and share, share, share. All right, I see you coming, I see you coming. We are so glad that you are with us uh, one more time and we're just thankful for God allowing us to have this venue once again, and I'm excited about my guest and everyone that is with us on tonight. And I know you're going to be blessed. I know you're going to be blessed. So we're going to start off with prayer, and then we're going to introduce our special music on tonight. And then we're going right into the word with our uh, guest. So it's so good to see you. Go ahead and write hello to me, whether you're on Facebook or on uh, you too. Let us know that you are here. Amen. Let's pray. Kind Father, we thank you once again for your blessings and your tender mercies. Lord, we thank you because you didn't have to let us live, but you allowed us to live again, to worship and to give you the glory. And I pray, God, that you would bless this uh, service on tonight, this ministry on tonight. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You're not allowed to be in this, Father. I pray that every stronghold is pulled down, Lord, that, that no issues technology will come through because we know you have a word for us on tonight. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm so honored to have with us tonight from Battle Creek, Michigan. Uh, they are the pastors of the Family Pentecostal Worship Center. And I'm going to let them tell everything because I know they have their own radio station and God has blessed them. So first, I'm going to bring in uh, one of the co-pastors. This is the son, Pastor Elmer Hess Jr. God Amen. bless you. God, God bless, bless you, you. Sir. I'm so glad and so honored that you and your father uh, have taken time to be with us on tonight. And we know dad's going to get his technical stuff working out. Oh, yes. It's gonna work out. <laughs> he, he, as we were talking earlier, he's the he's the old G, so he he's he gonna figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, when he comes back in, we'll bring him up. But before we get into the word on tonight, go ahead and and greet the people. Let them know about your ministry there in Battle Creek and, right. and what God is doing. Well, thank you first of all for inviting us uh, to be a part of your uh, gospel hour and. Uh, we're just glad to be here. We, you're way over in Canada, but we're here in Michigan. Yes, sir. And, uh, God, God has blessed us. Uh, I've been serving with my father for, for close to 40 years. It'll be 40 years in August. A pastor has been pastoring here in Battle Creek, Michigan. And so Amen. God has uh, brought us through many dangers, tolls, and snares. He's He's brought us through many situations. And God has, has blessed us to where we are uh, on the air 24 hours a day, seven days a week with a gospel radio station in three cities right here Amen. in Michigan. And uh, we have the capacity to reach uh, 50 miles and we're uh, pushing to to go even further. So God has blessed us. Uh, we also um, have a ministry here that uh, God has blessed us. And so we're just working in the vineyard and uh, appreciate the opportunity. I would like to um, say before I turn it back over to you, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to share uh, the word of life when you uh, asked me, I was a little hesitant, but God woke me up and he told me, he said, you need to be on that program with, <laughs> with the man of God, because you are, I, I want to speak into your life right now. You are a connector of people. That is your gift, finding the best in people and bringing it out of them. So I appreciate your ministry and, and thank, thank you for you, the opp opportunity. Thank you. I, I appreciate you uh, saying yes, yes and and coming in and being with us. And it looks like I got dad on here now. So we're going to try and bring him in. This is awesome. the father, uh, pastor, uh, superintendent. Sometimes I call him Bishop. It depends because he, he, he deserves all of it. Let's see if we can come on, if we can hear him, uh, bring him in producer. Hey, Amen. I'm so glad you oh, really. get all this worked out. That's I enough to give the Lord some praise. I need a drink of water about that. We need to have communion. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before we jump oh, right my. in the word, uh, New Life Fellowship and the Ontario uh, Diocese Fellowship International, uh, Pastor Hess Sr. is no stranger to us. He is a dynamic preacher and teacher. 
Um, he's a very good friend of my father's, and I can say that, and I mean that, not trying to pump him up. He really is a really good friend oh, of yeah. my father's, and I consider him one of my mentors, so I'm honored to have him on here. Now, you heard what the son said, and I'm going to tell on him a little bit. The son had to pray and wait, and the Lord told him what to do, but it's funny. When I asked him to come on, I said uh, to Pastor Hess Jr., I said, now I want you and your father. He said, oh, no, no, you're not going to get dad. He's not, you're not going to get dad. But, but he doesn't understand. I'm the Canadian son. I'm, yes, I'm sir, the other sir. son. Right. There you I, go. I see. I see. Yeah, that's right. You see I, how that goes? I, I, yeah, and sir. I told you, we were just going to make it plain. I, I told you that whatever you're selling, I want some. Yes, sir. Don't, <laughs> don't make it too plain. Don't make it too plain, Reverend. <laughs> but, but listen, I am so honored to have you both. Um, I, I'm just going to call you Dad Hess. That way, I That'd can be great. separate the two. Um, yes, sir. But your son has already told a little bit about the church and your radio uh, ministry and how God is blessing you. And listen uh, to my listening uh, ears. If you guys have not heard of their church, you need to go on YouTube and look and see what God has done. This is a multi-million-dollar church that they have been able to build, and God is just doing some wonderful things there in Battle Creek, Michigan. Um, but I brought them on tonight to share some word with us, and I'm going to be here to kind of intervene once in a while, but I'm going to let it, you two just go forth and minister to our listening ear. We are live on Facebook, and we are live on YouTube. So ladies and gentlemen, the, the pastors uh, uh, together, uh, Pastor Dad Hess Sr. and then Pastor Hess Jr. Well, God bless you, Bishop Riley, uh, tonight. We're so thankful to be able to connect with you and to, uh, first of all, say hello to our members. Some of them haven't seen me in a long time. <laughs> and so we're just grateful uh, to be on tonight and want to say hello to Bishop and Mother and all of the people of God everywhere. Uh, certainly you are doing a great job. You're doing a great work. Bless uh, you, we're we're going to have to connect with you and uh, find out how we can do this ourselves as well here in Battle Creek. Uh, the Lord has, Lord has blessed us and we've been pastoring for uh, be 40 years. Uh, this year, and uh, the Lord blessed us to move out of the city of Detroit. We helped to uh, build a congregation for my uncle, Pastor James C. Taylor, uh, in Detroit at Grace Temple Church of God in Christ, and uh, he had a thousand members, and the Lord led us up to Battle Creek, eight adults and some children, mm. and uh, so we left Detroit and came to Battle Creek, and now the Lord has blessed us immensely here in the city of Battle Creek, and I'm just so grateful to the Lord. I heard Dr. S speaking about the radio station. We're actually on, uh, our church is on the radio uh, 26 times a week. Amen. 26 times a week. We're on four times a day. We're on uh, on Saturdays. We're on on Sundays. And uh, so we're reaching the community. We're also going into the prisons in Jackson, Michigan, 24 hours a day. And uh, we're just, we're, we're grateful, uh, Bishop Riley. And congratulations to you, sir. Uh, your promotion, how the Lord has blessed you. So I'm, I'm just happy to be working with our Dr. Hess, and we're we're in this together as a team. Amen. Well, you know, I heard you say you've been pastoring for 40 years. We, we just a baby to you, but we're trying to get there. Uh, this past weekend, we celebrated 21 years awesome. of pastoring, and that's legal in Canada. That's a legal age in okay. Canada. All right. So All right. I think I'm legal now. Uh, right. But we thank God, and I do want to honor my wife. She's listening in. Uh, Lady Sherry is listening in as well. Now, listen, there's so much going on in this pandemic. Nobody really knew uh, or saw this coming. I know people were saying that they knew something was coming. And I've talked to several pastors um, and they said, well, we had a feeling something was coming. But but here we are in a day and age where you said oh, we can't even get to the church. We can no longer fellowship together. But but God is still open up other ways for you gentlemen. It's, it's by way of airways with the radio. And, and now we've got you into the video sessions of it. But I wanted you to speak to the people uh, tonight and, and, and let them know what God is saying to you both and, and what we could do while we're in this pandemic. I mean, we can either throw our hands up and, and call it quits or put our hands together and get to working for the Lord. And I've been encouraging people, you got some work to do. Yes. 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 Amen. All right, Doctor Hess, go ahead. Yes, sir. Well, I I would like to um, uh, say that the job of a pastor, as as Pastor Senior has told us, is to uh, make sure that we encourage the people. Uh, we give them words of encouragement, words of hope, and so we've started every day. We share a word of hope Monday through Friday, 
with our people through the radio uh, station. And uh, we are reaching not only uh, the people at our church, but also the people who, who tune in. But one of the things that uh, if I, we can go back seven or eight months, seven or eight weeks ago, when this first started out, uh, the pastor, uh, senior, he got on and he began to talk to us and begin to encourage us. Every month we have a theme. And in the month of April, uh, our theme was uh, building uh, on faith, building on faith. And this month we are talking about hope. But before hope. we could get to hope, we had to first tell the people that God has been faithful in the past. And so because of all of the different situations that have gone on, God has been faithful. And just like he's been faithful then, he will be faithful now. Right. So we have moved into this month talking about hope. hope. And, and hope is like the uh, transitional uh, piece. Uh, hope is the best thing that I can give you. Uh, I, I mean, I have a lot of money. Uh, I was uh, preparing, just kind of praying uh, for tonight. And uh, probably about an hour ago, God gave me one scripture that I want to read. Just kind of open it up. Then we'll let Pastor uh, share uh, but it's from the book of Acts, the third chapter, fourth through the sixth verse. You know it very well. It says, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look on us or look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, silver and gold have I none, such as I have. Give I such as, such the as. The first yeah. thing that I saw there when you talk about hope is, is you have to help. You have to lead people and point them in the right direction. Yes, sir. You have to give them vision. We, we cannot have uh, a provision if we don't first have vision. Right. Pastor often tells us that vision with vision comes provision. And so when he looked in the right direction, and this is what we must tell people, we must tell our members uh, to look on Jesus, to look to Jesus because he is the author and finisher uh, of our faith. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, along those same lines, you know, I, I'm a uh, forward focused person. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that uh, before God reveals the problem, he already has a solution in place. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. And so I'm past the past. I'm almost past the present. I'm looking now at post pandemic era. Mm -hmm. All right. And what we need to be thinking about how we're going to come out of this and go into the post pandemic era, because there are going to be a lot of, our parishioners, a lot of our members, a lot of people that are going to have a lot of unresolved issues. Mm -hmm. um, uh, many of the things that we have treasured in life, I know pastors, uh, they have dreamed about having a, a hundred car processional to the cemetery when they pass and the <laughs> largest, the largest church. And, and now it's down where you can only have 10 people there. And when you get mm -hmm. to the cemetery, can't nobody get out the car. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of unresolved issues that the believers are going to bring back to us when we do come back together, that we as leaders, we're going to have to be prepared for that. Uh, you mentioned a few minutes ago about uh, how there are many churches that have actually shut down and there are many churches that will not open up again. Mm -hmm. But we are, we are closed at our building, but we're not in hibernation. Come on. It's the difference between being in hibernation <laughs> and yet ministering. And we're, I believe that the Lord gave us the radio station. We've had it for 18 years. I believe he had given, given that to us for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. So while we're in shutdown, we also ought to be forward focused, thinking forward of how we're going to help people. When Just on this morning, 6.15 this morning, I'll give you a miracle. Uh, 6.15 this morning, we got a call from uh, one of our members and their son uh, was taken to the hospital last night at 1030 and uh, ended up on the ventilator 100 percent mm. last night at 1030. And we got the call at 615 this morning and we prayed yes. a, pr a prayer of faith. And at 1030 today, the mother called back and said that the young man not only was not on the ventilator, but he was awake. Glory. And Glory. so God is doing God is doing great things. Even so, we have to we have to prepare ourselves mm. to deal with the people and the unresolved issues that they're going to come. There are going to be families that are going to lose lo lost one. They're going to lose loved ones, and we've already lost many people. You all know how many people we've lost and how many 
wonderful people we've lost. And there's a lot of unresolved issues that people are going to have to deal with. And we're going to have to be prepared to minister to them and get away from a lot of the things that we've been ministering about. And we're going to have to get down to the business of helping people to become whole. Amen. There's two things that you guys said that I don't want to just run over. Mm. Uh, uh, Pastor Junior, you, you told us that's one of my favorite verses, by the way. Wow. Uh, where where the, they told them silver and gold. Yes, sir. Have I none? And and I usually stop there because you could preach a whole sermon on the such as. Uh. <laughs> and, and in a day that we're living today. I think the believers have to understand we have more such as mm. yes. than we realize. And and right. such as you don't have to know everything, but what you do know, give it. Mm. I got that. Such <laughs> as I have. <laughs> I got, I got my hand, hand up here. You got I see your hand, hand sir. I know. Okay. Okay. Uh let's keep going. Let's go past the such such as I have. Yeah. Let's get to the give part. Mm. Give. Watch this guy. Oh, okay. Watch All right. Stuff. Okay, a lot of people know that they have a call and a lot of people know what their work is. Mm. They're just not willing to give it. Mm. We have got to we have got to try to understand without saying exactly what God is doing. We have to try to understand what our role is mm. in this whole thing. And we have to know what it is that God wants us to do. I know that we we say we know what God wants other people to do. Right. But we need to find out what God wants us to do mm. so that we can give what it is that is required. And as you said, Bishop Riley, most people have more to give than they're willing, willing to give. See? But, you know, you know, as, as, as leaders, we can only bring out what's in people. We cannot actually put anything in. We have to pull out of people what's in people. If, if people, if their nature, if their heart isn't right, let me, let me put it like this. There is a difference between the nature of a of a bumblebee and the nature of a fly. Mm -hmm. You can you 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 can take a, a beautiful bouquet of roses and put it in the garbage can and put a bumblebee and a fly in there. The fly is going to go to the garbage mm. and the bumblebee is going to go to the flower. Lord have mercy. It's because of what's in them. Mm. <laughs> so we've got to try to pull out what's in people. And then assign them, mm. not 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 wait on them to choose what they. We have to assign them mm. what that what that we. I, I, I'm telling everybody, I don't want to go back to how it was when we shut down. Mm. That's that's the last thing I want to do. Mm. You see, there, there there's a book out by Tom Rayner, and it's called "The Autopsy of a Dead Church." Dead Church. Mm -hmm. The autopsy, and autopsy is when you go back and you examine what's dead and see what caused it. Wow. And the love of many has waxed cold. Mm. And, and one, one thing that causes a pastor's heart to bleed is when a pastor has pastored for as long as I've pastored 40 years and watched the congregation begin to diminish mm. right, bef right before your eyes. And you're giving it all you have, you're praying, you're seeking the Lord, you're you're just you're on fire on the inside, but you can see things dying all around you. Mm. And some and sometimes God just has to step in mm. and say, let 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 me take it from here. And I, I really believe that's part of what we're going through. So when we come through this, I don't want to come and go back to what it is where that's we were right. before, because I don't like what I saw before. But he's going to take us into greater things mm. if if the people learn the lesson. Dr. Hess, tell them what you told me about the lesson. Um, I'm trying to think what I said about the okay, lesson. Okay, okay. You, 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 you said people can never learn a lesson. Oh, yes, they sir. They don't realize a lesson yes, is being taught. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Go I ahead. should have introduced this at the beginning. Pastor <laughs> has Sr., and then his son is just like him. These are the masters of what we call nuggets. Y'all be yes, writing sir. these nuggets. Listen, write them down. You're going to get a whole lot of good nuggets out of here. Yes, sir. What was that? A le some people don't know the lesson. No, a, 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 people cannot learn a lesson. If they if don't they, know they're taking They're being lesson. taught. If taught a lesson. If, mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if, if they don't know, they're being taught a lesson. Mm -hmm. See, a, 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 you could be talking, you could be preaching, you could be teaching, but if people don't realize that the message and the word is to them, mm -hmm. then they won't receive that 
that word. And wow. so people have, people have to know when a lesson is being taught. One, one of my pastor friends told me years ago, he said, no matter how poor you are, he say, it don't cost you anything to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm through. I'm through for today. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, so, uh, pastor. You, you, you've hit on so many points there, Pastor Senior. Um, I, I want to go back to something you said that was real powerful because I, I heard your heart there for a moment. Yes, sir. And the number one thing I, I remember, uh, one of our missionaries, she went to a conference and she brought me back a CD and I listened to it from Dr. Sam Chan. He was teaching on leadership. And the question was asked, uh, how do you know or how do you help your children to take on the ministry after you? or in our case, our spiritual children. And he said, oh, that's real simple. You have to see who has your heart. Yes. Sir. You don't want to give anybody what you have because it's so valuable unless you know that you have their heart. And this is really the heart of the matter. So we're getting tired. As you as you told us, we don't want to get tired because this is, going, this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. This is a, a marathon. And there's a passage of scripture that I ran across the other day. Uh, just talking about hope, Second Corinthians 4 and 1, it says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. I like to call it the, the M&M. So ministry is not my gift, but ministry is what I give to others. Wow. So many times when we talk about ministry, you ask people to do something, they'll say, well, that's not my ministry. I have not been called to that. That's gifting. And what we see we're at now, I heard one pastor say it like this, we're in a season now where our gifts, we've got to push those aside because it's not about us anymore. It's about others. And we have to find the ministry gift that will attach to people so that people will grow. So we're not having as much church now, but we want our people to be empowered. And the only way they're going to be empowered is they've got to have a hunger. They've got to have a thirst. Because if we hunger and thirst after him, and this is why it's very important, even as we are ministering, one of the things that I don't I don't I do not want to get away from is that we plug into our local ministries because a lot of people are reaching for different things and people want to connect with you. And that's wonderful. But you need to hear the heart of your leader yes, so that you you continue to grow. I never forget it when my kids, they were younger and they went away. They went across the street for overnight. And I was like, oh, praise the Lord. And they came back and they was acting up. And I told him, I said, it was either me or my wife. I think both of us, whatever you got, take it back over there because you can't bring that up in here. Right. And we have to make sure that we are growing. And one of the things that I really believe the challenge of the church is, is we've got a lot of people that uh, they do church. And then you have people who have church, but yes. we want to become the church. Oh, wow. We want to be the church. We want to uh, become. I never forget my uncle preached a message probably some 20 years ago from Missouri. And he talked about becoming. Who are we becoming in this epidemic or this pandemic? Who are we becoming? Are we really growing? Is our vision really growing? So we have the ministry. And the reason we have the ministry is because we receive God's mercy. Yes. OK, so. When I get tired, I can't get tired because I received his mercy and I've got to pass that mercy on to someone else. Got to. OK. Wow. And so mercy is simply grace inverted. So wow. I received God's grace, but now I must pass that grace. And when I when I receive it, it comes out mercy because wow. people don't deserve. You know, we look at people and, and people have made mistakes and people have done things. And, and, and you know, and and uh, this is a time uh, really to just show people love. I, I was listening to A.R. Bernard out of uh, uh, New York pastor sent it to me and, and he came out of uh, COVID-19. Uh, I mean, he, he said he people were going into the hospital and within a half an hour they were dying. Wow. And he was saying he was there and it was one of the darkest places that he was in. But he said he never forgot how that he had to trust God and he had to lean on God and God brought him out. And so as we're in this as we're in this predicament, we have to know what the main purpose is. God told me, and then I'll be quiet. He told me on Sunday, I preached about um, Joseph and I preached from the 50th chapter. And we've heard it, what, what, what 
what uh, the my enemy has meant for evil. God has meant for good. But he had me go to that 19th verse. And the 19th verse says this. Am I in the right place? Wow. Mm. We're in the right place. But the right place was not uh, in the sense that I've looked at it. Well, God put me in this place. He was talking about vengeance and going against his brothers. And when God spoke to me and said, this is a season where we're on shutdown, but it's a season to reestablish our relationships with our families, to reestablish our ministry for what God really wants us to do. Wow. Our, our family is looking to us in this time as we move forward, as we prepare to come out of this. It's so a lot of people saying, oh, I'm gonna go to church when this come out. But we need to get a place of commitment or point of contact with them now. Now. So that they know that Jesus is real now, because uh, these are the last days. And if people don't get saved now, when this is all over with, it's it, we're in we're in for trouble. And so we have a ministry uh, that's waiting for us. And what God told me, Bishop, he said, you've got to go on there because I was saying, well, you know, well, I, I don't have this and I don't have that. And he was saying, hold up all this that I brought you through. You have a testimony, whatever that yeah. is. See, what we want, we want to look at other people. We want to compare other people. And God does not call us to be successful. He calls us to be faithful. And so wow. if we understand that he calls us to That's be- That's a nugget. That's a nugget. Yes, Write sir. it down. <laughs> yes, sir. If he calls us to be faithful, then we as people of God, all we got to do is be faithful and he will, he will uh, uh, give the increase. He will bless it. And so- that's where we're. At. That's where we're at. This thing called called Hope Pastor. I, I, I really, um, we have values at our church. We've had five key values of our ministry uh, that we're trying to, uh, you know, hit them. And, and and the more we hit them, the, the the better they'll become. If you don't have any values, then you'll do anything. Wow. And so we, as people of God, even when we're in this pandemic, I, every time I turn on TV and I see people going through this, everybody's got 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 some wine or, or drinking, getting drunk or whatever. We don't do that. We we've been we've got a value of holiness, of sanctification, wow. that we're trusting God, we're believing God, and as we do that, God helps us to be able to go stronger in Him. I hope you're listening to this, uh, my listening audience, because there's some major points He put in there. And, and one of them is, you know, we took for granted mm. what we had, mm. all right? Uh, we used to give excuses for why we didn't come to Bible study, uh, why we was late for Sunday school. And so God took all of that away. We, we got so used to working and working overtime. And when you weren't working, you was finding other things to do, but you never found time to pray. Mm. You never found time to read. You never found time to minister to the first, mm. your first fruit, which is your mm. family. Mm. And look what God does. He comes in and says, all right, I'm going to take away your norm. Because all of us, I don't care what level you were at, we were all quarantined. We were all stuck in our houses. Look where we're ministering from right now. Mm -hmm. I'm in my living room. I can see y'all in your living room. Yes, sir. Or your room because God said, I want your focus to go back to me. But we have something in us, co-pastor, mm -hmm. that we have to give to others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to mm -hmm. what? Give mm -hmm. to others. We yes, can't sir. hold this to ourselves. Yes. You know what? I don't have a, a, a testimony like Sister Beth is going to be coming on mm. shortly. I don't have a testimony that God healed me uh, from COVID-19, but I've got a testimony that God healed me from getting mm. COVID-19. One way yeah. or the other, you still have a testimony because even if you didn't get it, why didn't you get it? God. Exactly. Wow. Pastor? Wow. Yes, sir. Uh, let me just go back just a little bit because I, <laughs> I really want to say something and I, on, I, I, I don't want to be controversial, but uh, my son and I, we are, we are co-pastors. Mm -hmm. He is not my assistant pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He yes, and sir. I are co-pastors. Yes, sir. Uh, if something happens to me, uh, he is already the co-pastor. Yes, yes sir. sir. And so, you know, I, I, if so much is happening with men of the pastors, men of the pastors are passing away. And I think it highlights one shortage that we have in some of our ministries and that we have not c considered or thought too much about <clears throat> succession. Mm -hmm. 
I have another the uh, the sign of success is succession. Mm. And so there are going to be a lot of uh, churches that are not going to have pastors. And um, it's going to be, I remember hearing one time, I won't know the name, but I remember hearing one of the great leaders. And uh, he said, you don't want to be deeply disappointed. Mm. And many times, if there's no succession in place, people that have been hanging around or standing around, however you want to say it, they're deeply disappointed. Mm. And I think that this is the time for pastors and for churches, congregations, to know that the sign of success of a leader is not the buildings that they build, but it's what they lead. Legacy wow. is not what you, you know, it's, I don't want, I don't think I want to go any deeper in that, but succession is so important in the ministry. I believe that when people tithe into our churches, when people support our ministries, I believe they're not just uh, tithing and supporting our ministries for the present. I believe they're uh, tithing and supporting our ministries, not only for the for the present, but also for the future. Future. And oftentimes, if there's no succession in place, uh, some stranger is brought in and everything is upside down. And so I, I think this is the time for pastors. I think I'm mainly speaking to pastors now. Uh, this is the time for pastors to be considering who's going to carry on if something, because the things that's happening these days Tony Evans said something. Uh, he said that um, there's a lot of old people. Mm-hmm. And he said, you're not old because of your age, how long mm-hmm. you've been here. He said, you're old based upon how much time you have left. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so there are a lot of young people that are old because they may not have the long time that's mm-hmm. left. Wow. Mm-hmm. wow. And there are a lot of older people that may be young because they still got some more time. <laughs> And so we have to we have to be preparing. We have to be uh, grooming those that's going to come behind us. My son and I. The reason we work together so well is we don't have any differences. No, we don't. Ha- we have some preferences, mm-hmm. but we don't have any differences and distinctions. Pat. And so, yes, sir. And distinctions. Go ahead. We we have distinctions yes. as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. We have we have distinctions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, he like he like he he likes short sleeve. I like long sleeve. Okay. <laughs> that's 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 not a difference. That's a distinction. That's yes, a preference. Sir. All right, yes. I'm through. I'm through. Yes, sir. Well, I was looking in the Bible, and when God told Noah, mm-hmm. "Build me an ark." Yes. And he told them who to bring in the ark. Then they got in the ark. Y'all know the story. And it wasn't until they seen the sign that they knew the flood was over. And I believe we are in a flood. But if we keep looking, you you call it a post-pandemic ministry. If we keep looking, yes. there is an answer to come out. I don't want people to think that, oh, yes. that it's over. It's not over. Mm-mm. We have a chance to, to start this thing again. I will agree with you, uh, Pastor Hess Sr. It's not going to go back to the way it used to be. And it can't go it back can't. to the way it, it used to be. Because no. what God has done now is setting us up for something, a sermon I've heard you preach several times, something greater is coming. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. It's coming. Yes. All right. Can we can we go back? Can we go back to the ark just for a moment? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, people are asking me, Pastor, when are, when are we going to go back to church? When are we going to go back to church? We're going to we're going to do what what Noah did. Come on. Noah sent out a bird, <laughs> and when the bird came back, he came back wet. Yes, sir. And so Noah knew Noah knew that the water was still out there. And then he finally sent out a dove. Dove. And when he sent the dove out, yes, sir, he sent the dove out. When he sent the dove out, then the dove brought back a twig. So that meant that there was dry land that was there. So we don't want to rush out too quickly. That 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 virus is still on the loose. That's right. That virus is still out there. And it would be a it would be a tragedy. Out of these 72 or 73,000 people in the United States that have passed, and many of our loved ones and fellow pastors and leaders and people, it would be a tragedy 
if we didn't learn anything out of this and we had another 100,000 on top of that because we were in too big of a hurry. We have to wait till we hear from God. Mm. And that's what Noah did. Noah, God will, God will show you exactly what to do when the time comes. Amen. Wow. And, and there's an important lesson in there on waiting. Matter of fact, I believe it was Isaiah said, they that wait, wait, wait upon uh, the upon, Lord. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you got to wait. Yes. And I agree with that. Yes. Gentlemen, I know it seems like it has been so quick, but my time is almost up. My God. I want to give you each just yes. a minute to give some closing remarks. And uh, I'd like to have you guys back on again. I, I love my, this is my Hess family, y'all. Yes, sir. I, I love my Hess family. Um, but I want to give you each just a, <laughs> a minute to say something in closing before I bring on this this testimony. And then when, when I bring on a testimony, don't go nowhere. I'm going to bring you back at the end of it as well. Uh, Co-pastor. God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I, 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 um, the word that just comes to mind is, is let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Wh whatever you need of you, you were, you were quoting that uh, scripture about they that wait. When you go back to the original language, that word wait means hope. Hope. Our hope must be in the Lord. Our expectation is in the Lord. And so when we hope uh, for the Lord and, and I want to do just a, a 10 second clarification. It's not hope. It's godly hope. Godly so Christ hope. is our anchor. And because he's our anchor, we hold on to the person of Christ and the finished work of Christ. So our hope is not like the world's hope. And Amen. so as a result, we trust him and we believe. And so whatever you're trusting God for, I want you to hold on and I want you to believe God. Amen. Amen. Pastor Senior. All right. God bless you. Thank you for having us on tonight. Uh, Bishop Paul Riley, we sure thank and praise God for you. I just want to say again, as we go into this uh, post uh, pandemic era, that as we minister to the people that are suffering, uh, we're going to have to minister in the ministry of presence. Mm. Uh, sometimes we we're trying to minister to people and we say, I, you know, I've I've sat in your you know, I've sat in your seat. I've walked in your shoes. Well, we ha we really haven't sat in the other person's seat. We have sat in the seat, mm. but we haven't sat in the seat that they're sitting in. Mm. We don't have the shoes on that they. So we have to operate in the ministry of presence. Amen. And uh, the three that came and visited Job, the three that came and visited Job, they got they got a bad they got a bad report. Mm. But they were operating in the ministry of presence. Mm. Sometimes you don't have to uh, give a, a contribution <laughs> verbal in every conversation. <laughs> Sometime you just need to. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, God bless you. Thank you. God bless the first <laughs> Pentecostal Family Worship Center. Let's hmm. Pastor, go ahead and lead them in a prayer for those that might not know the Lord. And then we're going to come back with some announcements and we're going to let you go. Let me just say this. Uh, uh, I'm getting some breakup on my earphone. Uh, Dr. Hess, why don't you take us further with whatever he was asking? Right. For us to do yes sir let's pray father god we bless you we thank you for yes, your testimonies lord. we thank you oh, for yeah. the song we thank you for the word that we received god you said we're overcomers by the words of our testimony yes lord. by the blood of the lamb we plead yes. the blood tonight yes. the blood to deliver the blood that yes. sets free bring yes. peace where there is confusion bring healing where there is sickness bring joy where there is sorrow god deliver now Oh, yeah, thank you, Lord, for those now. who don't know you. If you don't mm. know the Lord today, just repeat after me. Say, Jesus, mm. I need you as my Savior. I have sinned. Yes. And I need to receive you as my Lord. I receive you based upon your finished work of dying on the cross and rising again. Mm. I receive you. And I thank you yes. according to yes. the word when I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord, yes. I am saved. Yes. I receive you now yes. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, my God, I'm telling you. I thoroughly enjoyed all of you mm. on tonight and, and, uh, Evangelist mm -hmm. Beth, you, you started to bring that preacher out, and we got to bring the preacher back in. Uh, <laughs> Reel him back in. Reel him back in. 
but but and, and you know it's just because we know that God is that good. Oh yes, mm -hmm. and, and all four of us have experienced God's wonderful healing power yes. in such a way. Yes. So I want to thank all of you for being a part of our ministry on tonight. We're going to lower you. I'll be back with you in about two minutes. Good. I just want to give some announcements to the people of God. I want to thank all of you for staying and listening on tonight. I am so excited that God has given us this ministry. I don't take it for granted. I'm not doing this for fame or fortune. I'm doing it because the Lord told me to do it. And I pray that it is blessing you. I pray that it is helping you. God bless you. May the Lord keep you. You know I love you. I love you with all of my heart until we see you again. God bless.